Hey everyone, what's going on? Mr. Harvey here. Let's continue our lecture on the French Revolution. And today we're going to be talking about the radical phase of the revolution. And this is a phase, ladies and gentlemen, where things really start to get off control uh, in France during these revolutionary times. So let's get into it. All right. So uh, really important for us to remember, ladies and gentlemen, remember, I said that there are six phases to the revolution, the National Assembly, Legislative Assembly. Today we're going to be entering uh, our third phase, which is the start of this radical phase, um, the convention, okay? Just for just for review's sake, ladies and gentlemen, after the convention, we have the directory, uh, we have the consulate, and then we have Napoleon's empire. All right. Now, really important within the uh, within the uh, creation of the convention, and uh, an important uh, group to understand within this radical phase of the revolution are the Jacobins, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This was a political club uh, that developed uh, within France, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a group that wanted a republic, okay? Um, this is a group that did not want a constitutional monarchy. Um, they did not want Louis around. They did not want anything to do with the Bourbon monarchy, um, and they wanted a representative type of government, and they were very much influenced, ladies and gentlemen, by Rousseau, especially his ideas uh, on the will of the majority, uh, the general will, okay? And we're also going to see this group, the Jacobins, when they do take power, uh, also embody some of Rousseau's um, ideals concerning gender and women, all right? Uh, and this is kind of just a, a few pictures uh, illustrating some of the, the meeting houses of the Jacobins, okay? Um, you know, uh, this membership was mostly middle class. There was really heated debates uh, within uh, these uh, Jacobin meetings. And we're going to see some really important figures emerge uh, who are Jacobins emerge from these uh, from this political club. All right, let's continue. All right, now the first uh, there's multiple types of Jacobins, ladies and gentlemen, and the first type that we do need to know are the Girondists. Okay, um, these are uh, uh, this is a group of Jacobins who are going to play an important role in the legislative assembly. Okay, we do not have our convention just yet. Okay, Jacobins are, have been around since the National Assembly and the Legislative Assembly, okay? And these, the, the Girondists are really important. I need you all to get out a highlighter because they are moderate. These are the moderate Jacobins, okay? They, they're they predominantly, uh, you know, rep, uh, kind of, you know, representing rural interests, uh, rural communities, okay? Um, and But the, what's important is they are moderate, okay? We're going to see later on some radical Jacobins, okay? The Mountain, uh, who have some really radical ideas, and we'll see some of those radical ideas implemented when the mountain takes control, okay? But the Girondists, ladies and gen gentlemen, uh, really wanted to oppose the counter-revolutionaries, okay? They wanted to op uh, oppose uh, Austria and Prussia, who were threatening them, who, were, who was threatening the revolutionaries if they harmed the royal family, okay? Uh, and they also wanted to oppose, you know, those emigres, those French aristocrats who were running away, kind of secretly planning, not so secretly, but planning to overthrow the revolutionaries with the support of foreign aid. All right. Uh, and we're going to see this, uh, uh, the Girondists, you know, lead the Legislative Assembly to declare war on Austria and Prussia uh, in 1792. And they, what they wanted to do was protect the revolution. Now, we're going to be talking about wars. We are going to start to see war, ladies and gentlemen, just blow up during the French Revolution. And it's going to be almost a continuous state of war um, from 1789 um, to 1815 with the fall of Napoleon. These wars of the coalition, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to see them you know, continue on in, with Napoleon's, are simply where France is fighting other countries. All right, and we're going to see many, many, many of these wars of coalition against uh, against France. Okay, even during the times of Napoleon. So you don't have to memorize every, you know, th these this war, the first coalition, you know, second coalition, third. You, you don't necessarily need to know all that. What you need to understand, and these wars of the coalition become more important when we talk about Napoleon. Um, but what you need to understand is that France is not only going to be at a state of, you know, civil war, you know, war between, you know, the the monarchy and. Uh, the emigres with the revolutionaries, but we're going to see them fighting foreign wars. So they're not only, you know, infighting, but they're fighting other countries uh, as well. Okay. Um, so that's just kind of the idea that I want you all to understand. But we do see this war of the first coalition start off, ladies and gentlemen, where the Austrian, Austrians and Prussians are fighting the revolutionaries, and we will see uh, France uh, survive this war. Okay. Um, now, what's really important, ladies and gentlemen, is things are going to quickly spiral out of control, and we're going to start to see the radical phase start with this Brunswick Manifesto. And what this Bruns Brunswick uh, Manifesto 
uh, stated it was a threat to the revolutionaries. The Duke of Brunswick, he was Prussian. He stated, okay, that if the royal family is harmed in any way, Paris will be leveled, okay? And France, ladies and gentlemen, um, in this first, uh, you know, war of the, uh, this first war of the coalition, this first war of the coalition, ladies and gentlemen, is really going to take this as a serious threat. And we're going to be seeing them fight numerous countries at the same time. But this, this, uh, Brunswick manifesto, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, the revolutionaries are simply going to get irritated with this and, and, and super frustrated with this. And this threat is only going to really continue to, uh, strengthen their resolve, uh, uh, to fight, um, and uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, this is really going to irritate, especially some of the more radical groups, because they believe they believe that the Bourbon monarchs, Louis um, the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette, are coordinating with the Austrians and Prussians and asking them for assistance and asking them to do this. Um, so this is really this the the the. the Brunswick Manifesto and this uh, these the this war of the First Coalition is 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 going to um, uh, you know just make things spiral out of control in France, ladies and gentlemen, quickly. All right, and this is really start going to undermine the Legislative Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, and lead to the convention. Okay, and here's where things start to get uh, pretty radical: the storming of the Tuileries, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Uh, this Brunswick Manifesto and this War of the First Coalition, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, is really going to raise a lot of suspicions about the king. Remember, the king has already tried to run away. All right, uh, there's there's been a lot of uh, questions surrounding the king if he's you know trying to uh, you know get foreign aid. All right, and there's been and and, uh, and we're going to be seeing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the people of Paris, okay, uh, 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 storm. The, the Tuileries storm the palace and the king uh, and his wife are going to be uh, imprisoned. And this is the end of the legislative assembly. Okay, you can't have a legislative assembly, a constitutional monarchy without a king. All right, and this shocked Europe, ladies and gentlemen, and it's on now. Okay, it is on. We we have seen the people of Paris lose faith uh, within the, um, with, with the monarch. We are going to see that with this Brunswick Manifesto directly challenging the revolutionaries, you know, they're simply going to be like, oh, you don't want us to kill the king? Well, watch this. All right. Uh, things are starting to really spiral out of control and if things are going to get yeah, pretty crazy in France. OK, now a group that's going to arise, ladies and gentlemen, uh, within this. Uh, uh, we've already talked about the Jacobins a little bit is the Paris Commune. OK, and, and this is just a, a group not as important as the Jacobins, but this is just another revolutionary group uh, that's going to be directly uh, set up in Paris. And it's led by a Jacobin named Danton. OK. Uh, this is going to be a really uh, relatively independent uh, revolutionary force in Paris. And they're going to start to siphon off power from the Legislative Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And they are going to urge the Legislative Assembly to suspend the Constitution of 1791, order new elections, ladies and gentlemen, and create a new government. So we are going to be entering a new phase, which is the Convention, okay? And this is going to be the First Republic of France. Now, really important for us to know this, ladies and gentlemen. France has multiple republics and multiple empires, and we're going to be st we're going to be memorizing all of them as we kind of go out the history of France. Uh, we're going to see a lot of instability with their governments. You know, they have multiple republics, multiple empires. This is their first republic. Let's circle that. Let's highlight that. Let's put that in our notes. Make sure we know that because we're going to see multiple republics, multiple empires. Okay. Um, so this 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 new uh, 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 group. Um, this new uh, government is the convention, and this is a republic, okay? Now, we're also going to see massacres, mass murder start to kind of, you know, run rampant throughout France. And we are seeing this revolution really start to spiral out of control, and, and France really lose control of this revolution. You're seeing some more radical groups uh, like the Paris Commune, like the Jacobins, uh, start to take power. Okay, and we're going to see radical Jacobins take power in the mountain. We'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, but we are starting to see a lot of instability with France. And this situation is starting to get very, uh, very um, deadly for a lot of people. Okay, and we are going to see the, the September massacres. We're going to see thousands of people just murdered uh, in jails, in the streets. And this is going to shock Europe, seeing France, this powerful European country, just implode. And it really is. Okay, it's really imploding. All right, and there is a picture of Danton, who is who is uh, a part of this. All right, so we are going to see the convention. Uh, we're going to see a new constitution, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and we are going to see 
uh, the convention, ladies and gentlemen, in its first act, abolish the monarchy. And if you don't have a monarchy, you don't need a king or a queen. And you can see where I'm going with that. They are going to kill them. All right. Uh, and we are seeing the creation of a republic. All right. This, uh, the, the, uh, the new kind of motto and slogan for this uh, republic was equality, liberty, and fraternity. And this was a very famous uh, 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 slogan uh, of the uh, of the convention and then some of these radical revolutionaries equality liberty and fraternity let's highlight that ladies and gentlemen very important for us to understand okay um now also the convention is going to make it very well known in europe ladies and gentlemen okay and this is kind of uh this is kind of off of uh you know enlightenment influence from john locke that uh it's going to offer assistance to any people any group if they wish to overthrow their government. Remember, John Locke said that it's the right of the people if their government is not protecting them to overthrow them. Well, the convention agrees, and they are going to offer any assistance, okay, to people uh, who wish to overthrow their government, and that is going to make a lot of enemies in Europe. You, you bet those monarchs in Prussia, in Austria, in England, in Russia are going to be like, what? In Spain, what? Are you serious? And this is, and we are going to see, you know, again, full European, uh, uh, warfare start to start to uh, come about because of this. Okay, but what's important, ladies and gentlemen, and there's a really famous saying. You may have heard the sound effect right there. Is that when France sneezes, all of Europe is going to catch this cold, and we are about to see, ladies and gentlemen, later on when France has revolution. This is important for us to understand. When France has revolution, we are going to see that revolution spread, and we are going to see during the Napoleonic Wars. When Napoleon invades Europe, he's going to bring the revolution to the rest of Europe, and we are going to see revolution start, okay? Um, so very important for us to understand that when France sneezes, Europe is going to catch that cold of revolution, and we are going to see that revolution start to spread, okay? Not necessarily immediately, but we will see that, okay? Important theme for us to understand, okay, that when France catches that cold, all right, uh, or fr when France sneezes, okay, with, uh, we're going to see the rest of Europe catch that revolutionary cold. Okay, important for us. And we're going to start seeing that, especially during the Napoleonic Wars. All right. So we are going to see, ladies and gentlemen, a very radical group of Jacobins start to take power. Okay. And this is the mountain. All right. These are radical uh, Jacobin. Uh, 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 fa this is a radical faction within the Jacobin. Okay. They're urban. All right. And they are led by Danton, but also a man that we need to know uh, 100% Maximilian uh, Robespierre. All right. Um, and the group that's going to really help the mountain stay in power, OK, are the sans culottes. All right. They are lower class and this is uh, they, they're urban uh, citizenry. All right. And they believe uh, and they believe in what the mountain is, is really preaching. OK, um, they're very militant. OK, very influential. They were they re uh, resented the social inequities of the three estates. Um, they were anti-monarchical, uh, and they favored uh, a government that where the people had the greatest say uh, in government. Okay, and they are going to support the mountain. So we're going to see the mountain get in Robespierre and Danton, uh, especially Robespierre. And we need to know Maximilian Robespierre. We'll talk about him a little bit more. Uh, but the mountain is going to commit just uh, a, some incredible, like just ho horrific atrocities. Um, and the reason why. They're going to be able to do this is because they have the support of the sans culottes. This 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 group of urban lower class individuals. There's thousands of them, and they are going to protect the mountain. So really important for us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that we see two different uh, groups or factions uh, within uh, the Jacobins. We have the Girondists, who are moderate. Important for us to remember that. Okay, they're more moderate. All right, but we have. The mountain, the the, uh, the mountain faction, who is radical, okay, who is radical, and they're more urban based, okay, and it's the sans culottes who are protecting the mountain, the sans culottes who are protecting the mountain, okay, and allowing them to to have this power and kind of get away with some of the terrible, terrible things they're going to be doing, okay, and here is a, a picture of the sans culottes. They were they were typically uh, called sans culottes based on how uh, how they. Uh, they uh, dressed, okay. They had a certain way of dressing, all right. Um, these were, you know, uh, shopkeepers, tradesmen, artisans, uh, you know, uh, uh, within the the, uh, the urban setting, okay.
okay, the sans culottes. And they're going to be providing a lot of the support for the, um, the mountain. Okay. Uh, Marat, let's talk a little bit about uh, Marat, ladies and gentlemen. He was a radical journalist who defended the sans culottes, who defended the mountain, and uh, defended this kind of mob mentality, mob rule. And he's going to be assassinated. Uh, it is a famous story about his, his assassination. He's going to be assassinated in a bathtub uh, by a woman named uh, Charlotte Corday. Uh, but Marat really is going to um, fuel the sans culottes in their anger. And he's going to be publishing uh, articles and publishing writings uh, that, that really uh, rile up the sans culottes and, uh, in their defense of the mountain. Okay? Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So one of the first things we see, we have a new constitution. Okay? And let's re kind of review really quickly. We've had that constitution of uh, 1791. We're going to see a new constitution of... Uh, uh, of uh, 1793. All right, we'll see another one. 1795. It's 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 one of the ways to kind of memorize these constitutions is they they have uh, they happen in um, uh, uh, odd years. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll go back and we'll we'll memorize the constitutions uh, a little bit later. Uh, but one of the first uh, radical things that the mountain is going to do, okay, that the mountain is going to do and the Jacobins are going to do is they are going to uh, they are going to kill the king. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Um, now, the, the, uh, this uh, trial was uh, really uh, facilitated by the discovery of a secret cupboard, uh, cupboard in uh, the, uh, the palace of the king, the Tulier, a cache of documents, and it proved that Louis uh, knew of uh, the foreign intervention and encouraged it, okay? And so we're going to see Louis, uh, Louis die, okay, which is radical. That, that's radical, killing the king, okay? And look how, look, I want you all to understand, look how far we've come within the Bourbon monarchy, all right? We talked about Henry of Navarre taking that power, consolidating that power, right? His uh, creating those new nobles, nobles of the robe, right? Facilitating his power, all right? We, and then we talked about the, the, the Bourbon monarchy reaching the apex of that power with Louis XIV, the Sun King, right? Versailles. Look at this, you know? Look at this. We, now we have Louis XVI who has been killed. Look at that of just that, you know, that uh, kind of journey of power, all right? It, pretty pretty uh, incredible, uh, just it, just an incredible thing that Louis, the, the Bourbon monarch, is, is being murdered, okay? And we're going to see his wife be murdered, Marie Antoinette. She will be murdered as well, okay, and executed. So the, the Jacobins are, 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 you know, not are, are radical. This is radical, ladies and gentlemen, and they are they are directly challenging Austria and Prussia, who are saying you can't harm, you know, don't harm the monarch, the royal family, and they are simply saying, oh, who them? And they kill them and say, what are you going to do about it? I mean, it, this is, ladies and gentlemen, a huge escalation in tensions, a huge escalation in instability in France. We have seen the French people just murder their monarch, and this is very similar, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to what we saw with uh, with Charles I in the English Civil War. Let's continue, okay? So, France was already fighting uh, Prussia and Austria, okay? Uh, and we're going to see the convention then declare war on Great Britain and the Netherlands. They're going to be fighting Spain as well. There's, there's, there's infighting as well uh, within France. And you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the instability. You can see just what a mess this is. The monarchs are dead. France is fighting multiple countries, okay, you can see that this is just a mess in, in, in France, ladies and gentlemen, okay, which is going to lead us to the reign of terror. Let's get out a highlighter and let's highlight this. Very important for us, ladies and gentlemen, okay. Um, we're going to see the, the, the widening of this war bring about radical changes, okay, and we're going to see the Jacobins, supported by those sans culottes, okay, start to make some really radical changes and really rule, um, uh, uh, through fear and terror, okay. Um, they're gonna the the uh, the uh, the radical mountain Jacobins are uh, gonna be taking control of the government, um, and you know many uh, French are gonna feel the sense that they are protecting their borders and defending their revolutionary I ideals, and we're gonna see many French, you know, accept this radical government because they're desperate. They're they're being uh, threatened. Their borders are being threatened. They're fearful that these countries are coming in to restore the Bourbon monarchy, to restore the status quo. And so, you know, especially the sans culottes are going to, you know, they don't want to go back to the three estates. They don't want to go back to the way things were. Their life was miserable. They, things were, there was a lot of inequity. And so they are going to 
accept and allow the mountain to, 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 to make these drastic changes um, in order to in order to kind of you know make you know defend uh, you know defend some of these changes all right which which is important okay uh, and so we're going to see to defend to defend you know and protect these ideals and some of these changes the government's going to take extreme measures during this time and this is known as the reign of terror and we're going to see a lot of the people in France be okay with this all right eventually eventually we're going to see it just lose too much control and and uh, you know we'll t we'll talk about how it ends. But a lot of people in France, especially the sans culottes, are going to be okay with this because, well, they want to protect the revolution and protect these changes. Okay? So, uh, one of the ways, that, one of the first things the radical Mountain Jacobins are going to do is they're going to be taking control of the government. And they're going to expel the more moderate Girondists who are saying, whoa, whoa, you just killed the monarch. Okay? What are you all doing? All right? The Girondists, the Girondists didn't necessarily want to do that. All right? That was, that, that's a huge escalation. But the, the Mountain Jacobins have control because they have the sans culottes. All right, the, Jack, the mountain Jacobins are simply saying the Girondists, if you're not with us, okay, if you're not with us, then you're against us, and the Sans Colossus will take care of you, and, and the Girondists are going to be like, oh, my man, all right, this is the, what, what are we going to do? All right, they're going to be losing control. The, 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 the Girondists are kind of seeing this this whole situation just, you know, spiraling out of control, all right? So one of the first things that the, the mountain Jacobins are going to do is they're going to start to form committees to mobilize for war and to govern France. And one of the most famous committees, ladies and gentlemen, and let's highlight this, is the Committee of Public Safety. All right, this is led by Robespierre, and we're going to talk about Robespierre, okay? He was paranoid, very, very um, uh, uh, comparable to Stalin, who we'll talk about, Joseph Stalin, communist leader of the Soviet Union. He was heavily influenced by Rousseau, and he was just, uh, just paranoid and a fanatical supporter of the revolution, all right? Um, and he is going to um, uh, deal with a lot of the internal and external challenges to the revolution, really be the leader of this reign of terror in this radical phase of the revolution. He's going to uh, collaborate closely with the sans culottes because he's going to need their protection. All right, and there is a picture of Robespierre. Okay. All right, so this Committee of Public Sa Safety, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do a couple things. Number one is they're going to closely control the economy. So capitalism, uh, -uh it's not really. It's it's going to. We're going to see kind of like mercantilism and some some notions of socialism. But we're going to see the government control the economy through this law of maximum. He, uh, we're going to see this committee of public safety fix uh, the price of bread so the poor uh, the poor could afford it, and we'll ration uh, bread for equal distribution. And you can see do, they're, they're uh, uh, part of this. Uh, the reasoning behind this is if they have the sans culottes, they have the urban poor, the urban classes fed, th that means that they're going to have their support, okay? Um, and like I said, this economy is going to really mirror uh, mercantilism in an early form of socialism where the government is controlling major means and major parts of the, uh, of the economy, all right? But this is the big one, ladies and gentlemen. This is really important this, within this Committee of Public Safety is we're going to see a new, uh, a new uh, military kind of a tactic, a new military type of organization, which is called Le'Veon Mass. And let's make sure we highlight this and circle this. Really important for us, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be uh, conscription, all right, where we see the entire population uh, of France, you know, be eligible to join the military. And we're going to see forced conscription, a.k.a. if you are uh, a draft, okay? It's If you are over the age of 18, you are eligible to serve in the military, and so they're going to start forcing people to join the military, um, and we're also going to see uh, the economy uh, be controlled for military purposes. So they're going to stop, you know, necessarily making, uh, you know, at a, a blacksmith, they're going to stop, you know, making, you know, certain things and, and, and uh, start making war goods, you know, stop making, uh, you know, metal chairs and start making guns. You know, the, the, the economy is going to be, you know, directly focused for the military. And with conscription, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see France be able to put huge armies on the battlefield. And we're going to see Napoleon exploit that. You know, now you know, they're not necessarily going to put 100,000 people on the battlefield with making men join the military, forcing men to join the military. They're going to be able to put half a million people on the battlefield. And that is going to really allow France to fight. Uh, Spain, Britain, Austria, Prussia at the same time and win, okay, and win and survive because they're going to be able to put these massive armies on uh, the battlefield and also their economy is going to be able to support these massive armies on the battlefield because, well, their economy is now being directed for military purposes. You know, you're, you're having tailors and seamstresses uh, 
uh, you know, not necessarily making clothes for the population anymore, but they're making uniforms for the army, boots for the for the soldiers, not necessarily shoes for the everyday average person. Okay, uh, so important for us, Le'Veon Mass is really a, a militarized economy, uh, a militarized economy, and we're also seeing this forced uh, draft of uh, conscripted males. Okay, uh, yeah, and so their army, their army is going to be about a million people. They're going to be able to put, you know, half a million on the battlefield. They're going to be able to have these huge armies, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Huge armies. Um, and we're going to see the, uh, uh, France survive this war of the First Coalition. And this is and what's important about this uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to see Napoleon really exploit this, okay? Napoleon's going to have just, just a huge army, okay? Here we go. All right, uh, let's continue. All right, so we're also going to see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, revolutionary tribunals, okay? And we're going to see... Uh, uh, led by Robespierre, um, enemies of the revolution are going to be uh, tried and convicted of crimes and executed. And so we're going to see, uh, and this is really the, the famous image of the, uh, the reign of terror, ladies and gentlemen, is that you know 40,000 people throughout France are going to be executed, many by the very famous guillotine, okay? Uh, and these are victims of all social classes. Some of these people didn't even commit crimes, okay? This was really trying to instill fear within the people. And this is a tactic that we're going to see later. Hitler will use it. Stalin will use it. Okay. These executions, these kind of show trials where people are going to be accused of false crimes, forced to convert, forced to confess and just execute. And a lot of this will be public. Okay. Um, and this is really instilling, instilling fear and terror throughout the citizenry of France to not challenge, um, uh, to not challenge the, uh, the mountain Jacobins. And this will, uh, you know, eventually backfire, but this is just showing Again, France losing control of the situation, okay? And we're also going to see, and I want you all to highlight this and understand, uh, with Robespierre, Robespierre is going to really promote this belief in the, in the republic of virtue, okay? And this was uh, uh, an idea he, he, he got from Rousseau, but it was the idea of sacrificing oneself and one, one's interest for the good of the republic. And so that's kind of what Robespierre is also using to justify this. He is saying, I have to kill these people because this is for the good of the Republic. These are enemies of the Republic. And what you're seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is Robespierre, Robespierre's paranoia and kind of on the verge of insanity. All right. Robespierre, Robespierre is, is kind of just losing control of himself. And he just sees perceived enemies all over. And he in his justification for this is he is doing this for the good of the rev of the republic, good of the revolution. He's doing this to save the revolution, all right? Um, and th that was a, definitely a, a prominent belief, this republic of virtue uh, that Robespierre uh, really uh, you know, promoted throughout his this reign of terror. Let's continue, all right? Uh, now, we're also going to see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, society, the Society of Revolutionary Republican Women, okay? Uh, Leon and Lacombe uh, founded this society of uh, revolutionary Republican women, and the, the, their purpose was to fight internal enemies of the revolution as, uh, uh, as well. Um, and so, the but the convention is going to begin to fear these women, and this is where we start to see Rousseau's idea uh, with women. Especially, we know that Robespierre is very much influenced by Rousseau. Well, they're going to uh, Rousseau is uh, excuse me, uh, Robespierre is not going to allow these women to participate uh, within the revolution. And he's going to be using Rousseau's logic of separate spheres to really justify the exclusion. Um, but we're going to see women be repressed in numerous ways, uh, uh, really in the sphere of Rousseau. Uh, and remember, Robespierre is heavily influenced by Rousseau. And we're going to see women be uh, excluded from the army, uh, you know, excluded from the government. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of women with, uh, you know, really who are challenging, uh, you know, the norms and speaking up like Olympe de Gouget, be executed. Okay, so what's important to understand about this and what I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, just so you all know, is that uh, Robespierre is not going to allow women to participate in the revolution. And this is directly connected with Rousseau because uh, Robespierre believes that a, a woman's place is not within politics. Remember, the, the, the separate spheres, the domestic sphere versus the political sphere and, uh, uh, and, and some of the other spheres. Um, so it, it's important for us to understand that we are going to see while women want to play a really important part. And we see a lot of women, uh, the Society of Revolutionary Republican Women, wanting to help the Jacobins. But Robespierre will not let them because he does not believe that, that, that is their place. Um, 
So women are going to be excluded, and many women who are going to speak up will be executed and killed. All right, uh, let's continue, ladies and gentlemen. So a really important uh, uh, move that we see the convention make is they are going to pursue a policy of de-Christianization, uh, de all right? Uh, they're going to start to close churches, persecute both uh, Protestant and cler uh, Catholic clergy and believers. And what they're doing is they're going to kind of wage a war on religion uh, from the government. And this is really in the name of reason. This is really in the name of the Enlightenment and in the name of reason. This really illustrates, ladies and gentlemen, some of the radical, more radical ideas of the Enlightenment being put into practice. Um, and so we are going to see, ladies and gentlemen, with that de-Christianization, uh, Robespierre try to wage a war on um, on religion, and that's not gonna that's not gonna be one of his greatest moves. As we remember, France is very deeply Catholic. There is a lot there is a lot of Christian uh, support, Catholic support in France, and that will you know that eventually will you know backfire on him, just like a lot of what he is doing. Okay, um, the Thermidorian reaction, ladies and gentlemen, this represents, ladies and gentlemen, kind of the end of this reign of terror and the, this. Uh, this instability uh, with, during the reign of terror, okay? Eventually, Robespierre is going to turn against a lot of uh, uh, other re Republican radicals, and, and Robespierre eventually is just going to just really lose his mind, okay? It, it, it's The paranoia is just going to get to him, and he's just going to he's going to start killing his friends. He's going to start killing some of his closest allies. He's going to execute Danton, okay? Um, and he's going to start executing anybody who he perceives as an enemy, Um and a lot of people in the convention, no member of the convention is going to feel safe with Robespierre kind of at the helm. And eventually Robespierre, him, they're going to have Robespierre arrested and executed just to like stop all this killing and, and murdering. Um, and uh, uh, and that will really, you know, stop this reign of terror with the death of Maximilian uh, 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 Robespierre. It's going to really represent the end of the reign of terror and the beginning of the Thermidorian reaction where we see, start to see the revolution enter a different phase. And that phase will be... Uh, the directory, the consulate, and then we're going to see Napoleon take power. Okay, so uh, the Thermidorian reaction, ladies and gentlemen, is important for us because this is going to represent a shift uh, away from the radicalism of the revolution. The Girondists are going to kind of come back. We're going to see the influence of more wealthy middle class individuals as opposed to the sans culottes. Uh, you know, however, it's really important to understand that the violence is not going to end altogether and that we're going to see uh, many Jacobins be killed and executed, especially the mountain, uh, and this is called the White Terror, kind of as revenge for all the terrible things that the mountain did while they were in uh, while they were in power, but um, this reign of terror, ladies and gentlemen, the Thermidorian reaction is going to represent a shift. We're going to see a, uh, a kind of the new phases start, the Directory, the Consulate, and we're going to start to enter this Napoleonic phase of where we see Napoleon and his empire start to rise, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to see it with the Thermidorian reaction. We're going to see another constitution. That will be the Directory of 1795. The Constitution of 1793 uh, was written, but it really never went into effect. The Jacobins just kind of ru ruled how they wanted to rule. Um, but we're, we're going to start to enter into another phase, ladies and gentlemen, which will be uh, the Directory. And we will talk about that in the next lecture. Thank you so much, everybody.